that's the thing about the NFL. There's so much attrition year in, year out. You never know what the next season is going to look like. There's going to be changes throughout every organization, throughout the league. And, uh, you know, I was telling the receivers the other day, like, just enjoy these moments that we have because this is a fun group I got to be a part of this year. And there's a chance that everybody may not be in that same group. Same with the other players in this locker room. And so you just try to savor those moments. And uh, so it's bittersweet that you're clean out your locker because that means your season's done. You know what I mean? That means you're not in the playoffs. And we all start the season with that goal in mind. And we just didn't get that done. Um, but, you know, this is a time you kind of get to say your goodbyes and and uh, get excited for, you know, take some time off. I think that's extremely needed. But then refocus and get ready for next year. Hey, Terry, when you uh, look back at the season and the ups and downs, how mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, I think we did some good things this year. Um, I think going forward, it'd be uh, great for us. I, I just speak for offensively. Um, just be better in the red zone. Um, you know, I think we did a great job of moving the ball for majority of the year on all the teams we went against. But whether it was self-inflicted penalties or we get down to the red zone, couldn't quite, couldn't quite capitalize. It kind of stifled a lot of our drives. And, um, that's something that I think we go in the off season and, and improve on, but also uh, just the fact that we have the opportunity. Um, you know, we'll have new guys next year. We'll have some guys that are back. Um, you know, I just think everybody will have to take the opportunity to get better this off season, come back um, at a new level because that's what's going to be necessary if we want to get to the playoffs. This group is special too. I mean, mm-hmm. these guys, you look like you all are really close. What makes this group so special? I think the first thing is unselfishness. And, um, you know, me fortunate to be one of the leaders, I try to uh, drive that into our group. You know what I mean? Like, I know I'm, quote, unquote, the, the number one wide receiver, but, you know, I'm just one of the guys. You know what I mean? Like, it's not all about me. I don't have to touch the ball the most to have success or to be happy. And, you know, I'm happy for Jahan. I'm happy for Kurt. I'm happy for uh, Cam. I could go down the line. You know what I mean? This is really, like, a brotherhood that I feel like we developed this, this year because nobody cared who got the credit. We were just excited to make plays for uh, the quarterbacks. And when you have a group like that um, who is cohesive, that has, I feel like any anything we needed skill-wise, we had in that room, um, the guys that could play all the positions, run the routes, size, hands, all that, I think we had that in that room. And we were always up for the challenge. So when you come in here and you have those tough days, the losing streaks and things like that, but when you come to work and you enjoy the people that you work with, it makes things a lot easier. So, um, you know, like I said, hopefully we can get as much as many of these guys back as we can this year um, because that was a fun group that we had. Terry, for you, for you, coming off, you know, you get the contract, you have a couple of mm-hmm. years. Does it get harder to maintain the level of the play you know yeah. it's like that it's like the way teams play you and all yeah. that? You have to kind of reach deeper into a bag of tricks. Yeah. Oh, definitely. If, if, if I – go into the offseason. I think I've tried to take this approach every year I've been in the NFL, but if you go into the offseason thinking just because you had a successful season this year that is just going to happen next year, you're mistaken, especially when you're in a position like myself where now there's four years of film out there on me. I'm going to get the number one you know, corner. You're going to get some shaded coverages at times. So I have to figure out ways to continue to up my level of play to begin to, to, begin to uh, continue to become smarter and uh, more efficient in the way I uh, run routes. Um, you know, there's some things that I feel like I can pick up on, whether that's like, you know, the soft zones when there's like a, a fire blitz or something like that. Just little intricacies that I could do that could help my game to, to get more open and to help the quarterbacks as well. So I'm looking forward to this off season. And like I said, I'm gonna take some time to get my body and my mind right just to relax. But um, I look forward to getting my body back stronger again uh, after a long season and, and improving on my skill set as well. Um, the chase is the exciting part for me. The, the ability to come back in and work on things and get better is something that excites me every year. Terry, when you talk about changes in, as mm-hmm. a face of the franchise, um, the changes will be coming, but yeah. when you unplug, uh, when you go into the offseason, do you just want to unplug work on you, or do you may have some contact with the front office? Yeah. May, Reach out to a free agent yeah. Or be, be involved. Yeah, uh, they don't really talk to me much about the personnel as much. Um, you know, I think Coach Rivera and I have had some good conversations throughout the the season about some things uh, going on in the locker room or how um, just the status of the team, things like that. But as far as personnel changes or changes outside of this locker room, I don't really necessarily have uh, that say so, which is fine by me because <laughs> I wouldn't want to have to deal with that uh, necessarily. So. 
Um, you know, I think it's very important that you take time away, um, enjoy your family. Our family sacrifice a lot to support us, and we're away from them for an extended amount of time. Um, so being able to enjoy yourself, uh, take some time to relax, but also at some, t at some point getting ready uh, for the next season. And I think, you know, as you get older, you, you learn that, that time frame and what works for you and your body, and you start to attack it that way. But I think if you go into the off season with the mindset of you're going to get better and you're going to attack the off season instead of just like, oh, this is a time to chill. It's time to chill, but it's also time to get better, improve on your craft so you can bring yourself better back for the next season to help the team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other things this year that you know yeah. in that you really want to do? Um, you know, that's a good question. I haven't really quite evaluated that part, but I know at some point I'm definitely, and I'll, I'll talk to Drew today as well um, about some things that he feels like I can work on as well. And that's like I said, that's the fun part. I, I, I think I like attacking some of the things that I feel like I'm getting better on. Uh, and it's it, when, you, when you set a, a goal to get better at something, it kind of gives you a blueprint. Um, and, and I look forward to working on those things to come back better. I think uh, from whether it was contested catches or, you know, I think this year I wanted to be better at runs after the catch where I felt like I was. Um, so there's definitely some little things that I feel like I could get better at, and I'm looking forward to um, that evaluation process from the coaches and just my own self-evaluation to see how I could come back better because, um, you know, it's not easy to get 1,000 yards and be successful each, each and every year. And... Uh, and you need, you need to be fortunate with health as well, so I'm blessed in that aspect. So um, I'm looking forward to whatever comes up, and I know I'm attacking with all I got. But I mean, there's so much there's uncertainty with ownership. Yeah. Too, and there's, you know, there's also some questions about staffing and all mm -hmm. that. And does it, what's it like to go into the offseason with that kind of uncertainty? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely uncertain. There's a lot of things that can change, you know, outside of the norm of this attrition. And I think we all understand that in this locker room, being professionals. Um, but also we also understand we don't control that aspect of it. And as a leader, I would just try to, if I had a message for the team, is control what you could control, which is going into the offseason, getting better at your craft, and making sure you're coming back a better version of yourself for this team if you're going to be on this team next year. And I think that's what we can control because no matter who's the, the owner or the coaches or things like that, we're the players and we have to go out and execute and win the games. You know what I mean? And um, ownership and coaching, um, you know, is a big part of what we do, but also we're the ones on the field executing and have to execute. And we had our opportunities to do that, and we didn't quite do that. So I think as players in this locker room, we can all take the opportunity to focus on what we can do so we're not in that position again, missing out on the playoffs. Terry, what are you first? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. One, what is it like that? And then does that kind of yeah. put you guys in limbo? When yeah. It oh, definitely. I think um, when you have change and new ownership or new coaching, um, that changes everything because, you know, I'm going to be honest, it's a business. And when new people come in, they don't really have any allegiance to you. And that goes for me as well. You know, I mean, I truly feel like every year I come in here, try to earn my respect and prove why I should be on this team and, and be a leader and things like that. Um, if you don't come in with that mindset of earning it, then things will pass you by and the attrition will probably happen a little faster so if there is new ownership if there's not new ownership I think the mindset still has to, to come in and, and you're earning the job because as soon as you get complacent I feel like that's when you get passed by. Terry when you first entered the league did mm -hmm. you imagine you know t yourself taking these leadership yeah. roles and being leader that you have become yeah. in soccer? Uh, and I, coming from Ohio State, I was fortunate enough to be a two-time captain, so I had a little bit of leadership experience, but um, nothing like coming into the NFL. And so when I got here, I just wanted to learn from uh, the guys that were already here, kind of be more uh, seen and not heard. You know, I mean, I, I was kind of always a, a uh, leader by example, but over the course of, you know, confidence in that and just development I, as I've become as a player, you know, my teammates want to hear from me more. So. Uh, I think I've said just before, I just always try to uphold the standard or, or the culture of what the head coach, Coach Rivera, is trying to profess to the team and just give the words that need to be said when they need to be said. You know, I'm not a big rah-rah person, but when I feel like there's something that needs to be said, I'm going to say it, and it's going to come from the heart, and I'm going to shoot it to you straight, you know what I mean? Because I feel like um, these guys in this locker room know the truth about the players in this locker room. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, you're selected by your teammates to be a leader for a reason because they see um, not only your ability on the field, but how you care about them and the leadership you have off the field and on the field. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to this offseason and uh, 
developing even more, even in that aspect. But, um, you know, I know I have to continue to be more vocal, especially with a lot of changes going on. I feel like there's going to be some, there's going to be a need for some type of constant, and hopefully I could be that constant uh, throughout this time. What do you think the stability of quarterback could be for the team? I know we have to Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you actually yeah. It, yeah, I think it's huge. You know what I mean? I think um, that you see you give a sense of uh, uh, comfort and and consistency when you have that guy that you can trust is going to be in there game in, game out. It's going to be able to work through the growing pains and there won't be necessarily changes. Um, and you have a guy that you can grow and develop with. And I think that's extremely important, not just for myself, but the cohesiveness of our entire group. Because, you know, I think all the quarterbacks we had this year did different things great, but having a consistency there would help everyone. You know what I mean? I know it's not as black and white as I just said, but um, I think, as you can see, the teams across the league who are fortunate enough to have that constant, um, you know, it just makes everything a little bit more cohesive. So, you know, I'm confident that, you know, our front office or, uh, give a great swing at it this offseason to make sure we have the right guys to compete for that spot next year.